as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you this morning, Lord. I thank you for your word, Father God. And I pray that you'll allow these verses to speak to us, to speak to our hearts. If we know you, Lord, if we profess to be a Christian, allow these words to speak to us this morning. Allow our hearts to be open and our minds to be in tune. Holy Spirit, please, you are welcomed in this place this morning. Minister to our hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I found that really amazing. Verse 14, where he says, For he knows how we are formed. And he remembers that we are dust. We're dust. We're dirt. Farmers sometimes argue <clears throat> over dirt. That's not your fence row, that's mine. It's dirt. But what does that dirt produce for them? Crops which then bring money. $7 a bushel for corn, that's a pretty good price. Dirt. Jesus formed us out of dirt. Why? Because he knew we could bring folks to him. The Bible says the fields are white unto harvest, but they must hear. We'll take that a little further. They must also see. I've been around some Christians that I tell you, I'd just soon not be one. Our actions speak louder than what comes out of our mouth. I'm so happy this morning that God himself does not treat me how I deserve to be treated from time to time. His word tells us that when we sin, we actually make him out to be a liar. And I surely don't want to do that this morning. We're talking about the if in knowing Jesus. If I know Jesus, I'm going to ask you all this morning a question. And I'm going to ask that you answer it in your heart and in your mind as you sit there. I'm going to ask you, do you know Jesus? Truly know Him. You see, you can know a friend or you can know somebody, but till you spend a little time with them, that decides if you like them or not. Unless they're family. And then you have to. <laughs> But to know somebody is to spend time with them. To know their heart. To know their mind. To know how they tick. Do you know Jesus? If you answer this question, no. In your mind, no one's going to, you know, just as you're sitting there. Don't leave till we get a chance to pray. Is that fair? Someone here would love to pray with you. Let's go on here to 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. If I know Jesus, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, 
the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. The man who says, I know Him, but does not do what He commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did must walk as Jesus did. It doesn't say should, although I feel that would be a better word at that point for me. But it says we must walk as Jesus did. I once read a commentary by William Barclay. I really like this guy. He is a very, very intelligent and a godly man. He studied our Bible inside and out and has written several, several books and theology studies on the Holy Scriptures. And in this particular passage, he says, the blood of Christ purifies us from all sin. This means forgiveness and cleansing can only come through the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross and us believing and confessing in that. Then he goes on and says, all of us sin. And we lie and make God out to be a liar if we claim to be without sin. If we claim to be without sin. Now to me, both these ideas are kind of twisted. They, they make sin, in my opinion, out to be a very light thing. Something we shouldn't really worry about. But we need to. Why live an ethical life? if we know God will forgive us no matter what the moral failure we do? Why live? Why try and live a good life if we know no matter what, God's going to forgive me? Why? doesn't make no sense, does it? But it does. You see, John, the, the, the Apostle John counters these two statements with this. First, the Christian is someone who has come to know Christ and knowing Him involves obeying Him. Secondly, one who claims to follow Christ must live the same kind of life Christ Himself lived. In this passage, we connect these two concepts of forgiveness and then obedience. Forgiveness comes as we obey the Word of God. If anybody does sin, we have an advocate. We have a, the best defense lawyer that there ever was, Jesus Christ, to defend our actions to our Father because He looks at our heart. best that that there ever was. And His blood alone atones us, allows us to walk this earth without sin as long as we confess and believe in Him. 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 6 page 863 tells us this. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us 
that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawless. But you know that He appeared so that He might take away our sin. And in Him is no sin. No one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. Who continues to sin has seen him or knows him. Ouch. Ouch. Sometimes at work I'm a little bit of an agitator to people. I don't try to be. Not all the time. And sometimes I don't even say nothing. I just sit there and go. People get upset. They get mad at me. Then I got to go apologize. You know, our actions are so loud. I had a lady tell me last week, she goes, will you stop yelling at me? And I was just going, why isn't this done? Didn't say a word. We're judged by how we act. Man, I wish that wasn't true. But people do it every day. You can hold a door for somebody and they say thank you. And you say you're welcome. And then this week I held a door for a lady and she said thank you. I said you're welcome ma'am. She looked at me, she said, ma'am, do you know what that means? I said, no. <laughs> I was taught to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Got all offended because they called her ma'am. How do we get through this? I didn't even know the lady. If we know Jesus, yes. we have somebody who will stand with us when we go to the Father. That night I prayed and I asked God, Lord, forgive me. I didn't mean to, I may never see this lady again. I didn't mean to offend her. Forgive me. The if in knowing Jesus. I am so thankful that Jesus has never lost interest in his people. He formed us out of dirt. Now, is dirt real bright sometimes? It's dirt. Is it real intelligent sometimes? It gives forth fruit, it grows grass, it grows corn, it grows beans, it grows wheat, provides us nourishment that we need. But guys, it's, it's dirt. <coughs> and we're dirt. But Jesus has never, ever lost interest in us. He's never said, I don't know you. Jesus himself will protect us. He will help us. Jesus' message must be be carried to the entire world. <coughs> we read earlier that if anybody obeys his word, 
God's love 